Hi, I'm Marissa. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. I wanted to give you a quick little introduction to this episode. The first episode I shot went a little long. It was over an hour, and nobody on YouTube has the time to sit for an hour and watch a video. So I decided to break it up into pieces. So this first piece is my introduction. The next few episodes will continue uh, on with that, telling my story. The reason for the vlog is to supplement a documentary I am shooting, um, documenting my transition from male to female. Thank you for watching again, and please tune in for more upcoming episodes. Okay, bye. Hello, my name is Marissa, and I am transgender. Uh, I was born a boy, and I am in transition to live my life as a woman. Uh, it's something I've been dealing with my entire life. I am now 37 years old, and I first discovered that I was transgender uh, when I was about four or five years old. Now, back in 1982, uh, there wasn't the word transgender, and if, and if it was around, uh, I had never heard of it. And of course, neither had anyone else I knew, my parents included. So growing up as a five-year-old who didn't really know what boy or girl was, I just knew I identified with girls. And I may not have known what that meant, but um, the fact was, uh, growing up, um, I just kind of knew I, I wasn't into the things or uh, didn't identify as a boy. Again, I didn't know that there was a term for this. I didn't know that there was a definition or a, um, an explanation for it. Um, when I was young, uh, when I would be asked, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? My answer was, I, I want to be Barbara Mandrell. Um, now, I'm sure anyone watching this wouldn't even know probably who Barbara Mandrell is. Um, but back when I was a kid, when I was about four years old, there was a television show on, uh, on TV that was um, the Barbara Mandrell show. It was Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell Sisters. And it was a variety show and they did all kinds of stuff and they did a lot of singing and, and, um, and, and musical numbers. And the thing I always remembered was uh, all the elaborate hairstyles and, and outfits and stuff that they wore. And I just always remember I identified with that. Um, it was something that was really interested me. So when I would always be asked, you know, you know, it's something that people always ask you when you're a kid is, you know, oh, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would always answer, I want to be Barbara Mandrell. And uh, they would laugh, and think it was stupid and funny and silly, and oh, it's so funny. And it became kind of like the family running joke, where like uh, they would ask me on purpose in public situations or, you know, in family gatherings or whatever, um, you, know, uh, you know, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? Just so they can, you know, get the answer out of me. Um, and, and, you know, it was funny because, you know, people would kind of laugh at that, and they would think it was funny and silly and goofy, and they thought it was just like, oh, one of those silly things kids say. Um, but I was always kind of like inside my head going, well, I'm not really making a joke and it's not really funny. I, I really want to be Barbara Mandrell when I grow up. So um, I guess that was like when I first kind of like realized that, um, you know, the, the, the way I was expressing myself wasn't right um, in, in the eyes of, of, of others. Um, I mean, obviously, I don't see anything wrong with it, and, and, and nor is there anything wrong with it. Um, but you know, it was it, it, it elicited a, a response from people that obviously there was there's like shock value to it, and they and they thought it was silly, you know, something that a, a, a four-year-old boy shouldn't say. Um, so that's kind of like how I first identified um, with my gender issues. So, you know, as a young child, I I I. I I did come out to my parents. Um, it was a family vacation, and um, we were all together. And I decided to tell my brother and sister how I felt. I wanted to tell them I want to be a girl, and I feel like a girl. And I told them, and I, I prom, you know, I made them promise, you know, don't, don't tell mom and dad, you know, because I, I, I kind of knew. Um, that it was something to keep to myself, which is kind of sad, I guess, at four years old. 
And of course, the first thing my brother and sister do is they run right to my parents and tell them, ha ha ha, it's so funny. Uh, Mario, my boy name, uh, Mario uh, said that he wants to be a girl. And, you know, it was kind of like, the reaction was kind of like, well, what? And then, you know, they asked me. And I was like, well, yeah, I, 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 I want to be a girl. I feel I am a girl. And I don't remember my mom's response. I don't think she really had one. But I remember my dad's response. And my dad's response was um, anger and confusion. Uh, there's no manual or, you know, guidebook to tell a parent how to handle it when their child when they feel is male or female. There's no, there's no rule book that tells you how to handle that, how to react. And in 1982 or 1983, whatever, whatever year it was, uh, there definitely wasn't any discussion about it, how to handle it. So my father's reaction um, was, was anger, and he pulled a, out of the drawer of the camper we were in, he pulled uh, a pair of scissors out of the drawer and said, if, if I want to be a girl, that he'll make me a girl right now. And that terrified me to death. Now, I know now that he wouldn't have mutilated me. My father wouldn't have harmed me in that way. But it was definitely his way of, of scaring me, you know. Um, I don't know why that's, that's, a, that's a way to uh, communicate with your child, to scare them like that. But that was my dad's response, and it worked. <laughs> it really worked because I hit it very well. I got very good at hiding it. Uh, the, that situation made me realize that's not a that's not a response I want again. I don't want someone to respond to me that way again. I don't want to. I didn't want to disappoint my father. I didn't want to disappoint anybody. Uh, and you know that made me come to the realization that the false realization, I guess, that that what I was feeling was wrong. That there was something wrong with me. So I didn't want that to happen again. So I hit it, and I hit it very, very well. Uh, I did a lot of things that I didn't necessarily want to do. A lot of things that um, I definitely won't, wouldn't do today. Uh, things that. I felt identified me as male and so I did all the things that I thought my father wanted me to do. I played baseball and I played football and I went fishing and I shot guns and rode dirt bikes and did all the things that my dad liked and you know really became really good at making people think that I liked it. And I got good at a lot of the a lot of those things. I was good at playing football. I was good at playing baseball. You know, I you you kind of tend to fool yourself. I think after doing it for a really long time and and pretending like I was to be something that I wasn't, you think that maybe you can train yourself to be normal. That you could be the boy that you were born to be. 